episode brought to you by thegiveawaygeek.com. Win board games, electronics, and gift cards at thegiveawaygeek.com. The Geek that keeps on giving. Hey everyone and welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today we'll bring you a how to play video of Tavarua from Far Off Games, designed by Cody Miller. In Tavarua, you are a surfer ready to ride the waves in a friendly competition to see who's the best. Choose a surfboard, paddle out, and watch for the perfect wave to catch. Once you're up and riding the wave, you'll need to maintain your balance by performing tricks and watching the shifting waters to keep from wiping out. Each successful wave counts towards your score, but in the end, only one surfer will win the Grand Champion Trophy. First, you'll need to place out the game board, and you can choose either the Tavarua side or the Oregon side. The uh, boards are flipped, however, functionally, they play exactly the same way. Next, place out the six wave tiles. Notice that the game board is broken up into four different sections. The green channel spaces, the purple break spaces, the gray wash spaces, and the golden shore space right here. Also take note that each of the water spaces is labeled one through six. Next, take your six wave dice and roll them, randomly assigning a number to each of the waves. I prefer to roll them one at a time. However, as long as they are assigned randomly, it doesn't really matter how you get there. You'll set the score track nearby. And also place the Stoke, Hang Tin, Barrel, and Perfect tokens in a pile nearby as well. Next, each player will choose a color and then take the matching Longboard and Shortboard, Longboard Score Tokens, Shortboard Score Tokens, Balance Token, Surfer, and Surfboard Mats, which have a Shortboard on one side and a Longboard on the other. Any unused colors will be returned to the box. Let's take a quick look at the surfboard mat. As I said already, one side is a short board and the other is a long board, as you see here. In the middle of either board, you'll find balance spaces. Seven are on the long board side, five are on the short board side. We'll go into the balancing of your surfer in more detail later. But just note that it'll move up and down the board as you're riding waves. And anytime you're not riding a wave, your balance will be in the center of the board. Also note that there are actions in the four corners of the short board as well as the long board. We'll go into detail on what these actions are in a little bit. But for now, just know that whether you're on the short board or the long board side, these actions are identical. Give each player a player reference card. And then each player will decide if she wants to start on a short board as red and blue have, or a long board as green has. Once a player decides which board she wants to use, she'll place her meeple lying down on the board like that. Each player will then set her unused surfboard to the side along with the rest of her tokens, flip her surfboard mat to the side that she's currently using, and place the balance token in the center of the mat. Shuffle the player deck and place it nearby, and do the same with the stoke deck. Now let's take a quick look at the player cards that you'll be using during the game. The number on the top left indicates the card's power. This arrow, which will either be forwards or backwards, indicates the direction your balance will shift when you use this card to either catch or ride a wave. The name down here is the name of the card, and then some cards any card with a four will have this symbol to remind you that four power cards cannot be used on a longboard. Now let's take a look at the stoke cards included in the game. Stoke cards are one-time use effects and do not count toward your total hand limit. Therefore, you can have as many stoke cards as you can afford to purchase. The following are the possible stoke cards you may run into. Jet Ski will allow you to take your surfer to any space within the channel. Inspiration will allow you to look through the player discard pile and take up to three cards, then discard down to your normal five total. 
the Focus Stoke card will allow you to immediately look at the back of the top three wave cards, then rearrange them in any order. Call It allows you to choose what die number will be on the new wave that's about to form. In the Zone allows you to look at the front of the top card of the wave deck and then return to the deck. And Energy will allow you to gain three Stoke tokens. Remember though, Three Stoke Tokens is the maximum number of Stoke Tokens a person can have. And speaking of Stoke Tokens, each player also receives one of these to start the game. Each player will now be dealt five cards from the player deck. Each player will keep these cards in her hand and there will be hidden information from the other players. If a player is on a long board, she should immediately check to see if she has any fours. If so, they must be immediately discarded and then draw back up to five. At this point, if a player wishes, she may choose any number of cards in her hand and discard and then draw back up to five. Once this is done, the new cards must be kept. During the game, anytime a player plays one or more cards, she will immediately draw back up to five. And in this case, with the long board, the player has drawn a 4 and must immediately discard it and draw again. If during the course of play the player deck ever runs out, immediately reshuffle the discard pile to create a new player deck. Next you'll need to set up your wave deck. Take the 9 barrel cards, give them a shuffle, and take 4 and place them on top of the rest of the wave cards, placing the other 5 in the discard pile. Next, shuffle your wave deck, including the four barrel waves you just placed in the wave deck. After you're satisfied with your shuffle, you'll take the top 12 cards from the wave deck and place them on the discard pile as well. Then, you'll take your discard pile and without looking at what cards are in here, place it in the box. The remaining cards will be your wave deck for the game. Now that we've set up the wave deck, let's take a look at exactly what the wave cards are. On the back of each of the cards, the player will be given a hint as to what may be on the front of the card. In this case, this card will move the player's balance forward or backward zero to one spaces, whereas this card may move the player backward only, but it will be either two to three spaces. If you flip the card over, you can see this one, in fact, does not move the player at all, and the name of the card is Glass. On the other hand, this card ended up moving the player two spaces backward, and the name of the card is Lull. Finally, the player who most recently visited the ocean will receive the first player token, and you're ready to begin the game. Each game is played out over a series of rounds, and each round has three phases. The phases in each round are played simultaneously by all players. Rounds will continue until there are no more cards left in the wave deck. Since all rounds are played simultaneously by all players, the primary purpose of the first player is to walk players through each of the phases of the round. Also, any and all timing issues will be resolved in turn order starting with the first player. Phase 1 is the advance play phase. During phase one, a player who is on shore, as green is right here, may return stoke tokens to the supply in order to purchase stoke cards at a cost of one stoke token per stoke card. It's important to remember which stoke cards you've purchased this round as they cannot be used the same round you purchased them. While on shore, a player may also switch out their long board for their short board and vice versa. During the advance portion of the advance play phase, the first player will take the wave in space one, move it to the top, push all the waves down like so, re-roll that die, and place it on the wave. And the second part of the advance play phase, as you may have guessed, is to play cards. Prior to playing any actions, players may play Stoke cards if they wish, resolving them in turn order. 
and then discarding them after their resolution. After which, all players now choose which action they wish to take, and all players must play at least one card each round. Each action arrow on a player surfboard mat has two distinct actions. Which action a player takes by placing a card here will be determined by where that player is on the board. The actions are catch, ride, wait, bail, paddle out, score, paddle in, and recover. To choose an action, select a card from your hand and place it face down next to the corresponding action on your player mat. So for instance, my surfer is here and I want to bail on that wave. So I'd place a card right here. After all players have played at least one card next to their mat, and you can see here, green has chosen the catch action, blue has chosen the paddle out action, and red has chosen the wait action. The second phase, known as the resolve phase, begins. Players flip their played cards face up and resolve the action they have chosen. Now let's take a closer look at all the available actions. The paddle out action will help the player adjust her position in the channel to better catch the perfect wave. A player may play no more than one card next to the paddle out action. You may add one or more stoke tokens to this card by placing them on top of the card like this. For each stoke token played, you may add or subtract one from the number listed on the played card. When this card is resolved in the resolution phase, you will move your surfer away from shore, a number of spaces equal to the number on the card played, plus or minus any stoke token. So in this case, the surfer will move four spaces, three plus the stoke token. It also would have been possible to move the surfer only two spaces, three minus the stoke token. After the action is resolved, discard the stoke token and the card. If a player's movement were to exceed the number of spaces available, for instance here, a power of three with only two available spaces, the player will end her movement in the furthest most space. Otherwise, the player must move her surfer, the exact number of spaces indicated. The paddle in action is accomplished exactly like the paddle out, except it predictably moves the surfer closer to shore. In this case, two spaces, back to shore. The wait action can be used if the player needs to discard unwanted cards while also allowing her surfer to hold position in the channel. Unlike Paddle In and Paddle Out, you may play one or more cards next to the weight arrow. During the resolution phase, you discard all the played cards and take no further action. The catch action is used to move the player's surfer from the channel onto the adjacent wave in the break. In order to take the catch action, you must first make sure there is room on the wave and that the wave is broken. In a one to four player game, each wave may only have one surfer on it. So if we were playing one to four players, and in this case we're playing three, this green surfer could not catch this wave as the red surfer is already on it. In a five to six player game, each wave may have two surfers on it. So in that case, the green surfer could in fact catch this wave along with the red surfer. After making sure there's room on a wave for her surfer, the player must also check to make sure the wave is broken. To check to see if a wave is broken, simply compare the die on the wave to the number of the space the wave is on. Waves with a die result equal to or higher than the space are broken and may be ridden. Once a player determines that a wave is broken and has room on it, she may place a card next to the catch action. As with paddle in and paddle out, a player may add one or more stoke tokens to adjust the power of the card. To resolve the catch action during the resolution phase, the player will move their surfer onto the adjacent wave and adjust their balance accordingly. If the player maintains her balance, she has successfully caught the wave. The player now moves the player card into her score pile and gains one stoke token. If for some reason the player played a card that would cause her to lose her balance by moving off the surfboard, 
the player wipes out and ends up in the wash like this. We'll talk more about wiping out in a moment. Sometimes two or more players might attempt to catch the same wave in the same turn. If there isn't enough room on the wave for all players involved, this triggers a contest. A contest is resolved by both players comparing the cards they're using to attempt to catch the wave. The following series of checks should be made in the following order to resolve the contest. If any players play the exact same color and number card, they have collided and immediately both players would wipe out into the wash. With the exception of the two players colliding into each other and wiping out, the losing players in a contest will remain in the channel after a player takes the wave, if there's still room in the wave, for instance in a five or six player game, then the player with the next highest card will be able to take the wave. If there was still room on the wave after one player had caught the wave, for instance in a five or six player game, then the player with the next highest number also catches the wave. Once the wave is full, all players in the contest with lower numbers that didn't wipe out stay in the channel and can take future actions in future rounds from that position. The purple actions Ride and Bail are available to any player riding a wave in the break. The Ride action lets a player perform maneuvers on the wave, adding points to her score while moving her balance token on her mat. To take the Ride action, play only one card next to the Ride arrow on your mat. You may play one or more Stoke tokens to adjust the power of the card. During the resolution phase, the player moves her balance token according to the number and direction on the card, plus or minus any stoke tokens. If the player maintains her balance, she places the card into her score pile. If she loses her balance, she wipes out and discards the played card. The bail action lets a player exit the wave she's riding gracefully, allowing her to score any points already in the score pile and also discard any unwanted cards from her hand. This is different than wiping out, because when you wipe out, you are only able to score the highest card in your score pile. To take the bail action, a player places one or more cards next to the bail arrow on her mat. She then moves her surfer to the wash adjacent to the wave, still standing up. During the third phase, the player will be able to score her wave and record the score on the score track, which I'll explain further in just a moment. The player will then move her surfer to the channel where her surfer will lay down and prepare to catch another wave. Any player cards used in the bail action will be discarded with the rest. The recover action is the only action available to a player who is wiped out and is lying on her board in the wash. A player who is wiped out will only be able to score the highest card in their score pile. In this case, there's two fours, but the player still only gets to score one of those fours. When scoring that highest card, a player is able to include any tokens that might have been placed on that card during the course of riding the wave. To take the recover action, a player places one card next to the recover arrow on the mat, and during the resolution phase, the player will move her surfer and surfboard to the shore regardless of how far away from shore she was. The player then discards the played card. The third and final phase of each round is the wave score phase. Now before we discuss this phase, let's see how the player's surfer got to where she is. This green surfer caught this wave with the die result of three back on space three with this four card playing the catch action. This resulted in the surfer receiving a perfect token since the three matched the space that the wave was caught. Then on the two space, the surfer played a two to maintain their balance. And now here on space one, they've played a one, which has resulted in the balance token ending up on the second space back from the front of the surfboard. The first thing players will do in the wave score phase is flip over the top wave card. And you can see it results in a lull, which is going to shift the player's balance to space backwards. All players riding waves will immediately shift their balance as instructed on that card. If any players lose their balance, they wipe out and, once again, score only the highest card in their score pile, including any tokens. If a player has successfully navigated the wave 
while in Space One, they have successfully finished riding the wave. They've reached shore and they've received two bonus points. Their surfer and surfboard are moved over to this section here and placed laying down on the board. Players also receive one stoke token for making it to shore. Any players that made it to shore will now score their wave and record their score on the board up there. In the case of this wave, we have four, six, seven points plus one point per card for the perfect token. So that's eight, nine, ten, and then two more points for making it to shore. That's a total of 12 points. The player will then find their corresponding longboard or shortboard token, in this case it will be a shortboard, find the 12 point mark there and place the score marker on that space. So you can see the judges rated the surfer's performance on that wave a 5.5. If a player has already scored her board twice, she will look to see if the most recent score is higher than the lowest of the previous two. If it is, change the lowest score to the new score. Your score can only improve in this manner. You will never lose points this way. Now let's discuss in a little bit more detail the four different tokens there are in the game. Stoke, Perfect, Barrel, and Hang Tin. A barrel is when a perfectly formed wave creates a tube of water around the surfer. Unlike other wave cards, the barrel does not affect the player's balance. When a barrel wave card is revealed, the player's played card for the ride catch action is compared to the revealed value. In this case, a 2. Successfully riding the barrel depends on the board the player is currently using. If the player is playing a long board, the printed value of the player card must match this number. If the player is riding a short board, the printed value of the player card must not match this number. If the player successfully rides a barrel wave card, she takes one barrel token from the supply and places it on her score pile on the card she just played. If the player isn't successful, she wipes out immediately regardless of her balance. Earning a barrel token is worth five additional points. If the player is riding a short board when the barrel card appears and they choose to use a four power card, they have decided to avoid the barrel altogether. They ignore the success failure test for the barrel, but they also are not awarded the five point token for navigating the barrel successfully. Hang 10 tokens are worth two points and are only available when riding long boards. If a player ends the wave phase with her bounce token on the last space of the nose of the long board, she is awarded a hang 10 token and places it on her score pile on the card she just played. A player who catches a wave with the die result matching the space they're currently on earns the perfect token and places it on the card she just used to catch the wave. As a reminder, there are three times a player will earn a stoke token. When they catch a wave, when they make it to shore, or when they wipe out. When using a stoke token, remember that if you're riding a wave, it doesn't matter how you used it, it will earn you an additional point at the end of that wave. Also remember that a player may have no more than three stoke tokens at any given time. And finally, when deciding whether to add or subtract to the power of a player card, remember that all stoke tokens used must only add or subtract. You may not use one stoke token to add and another one to subtract just to boost your score. After the final wave card has been resolved, the game has ended. Now players must determine who is awarded the three trophies for Longboard, Shortboard, and Grand Champion. First, let's award the Shortboard trophy. All players determine their total Shortboard score by combining their two scores. If a player only rode their Shortboard once, they will of course only have one score. So in this case, Green has a Shortboard score of 10.5, Red has a shortboard score of 14.0, and Blue unfortunately only scored their shortboard one time with a score of 9.5. So in this case, Red is the shortboard champion with a score of 14.0. Next, we'll use the exact same procedure to determine our longboard champion. So Green has a longboard score of 4.5, Red has a longboard score of 8.5, and blue has a longboard score of 13.0. In this case, blue is a longboard champion. 
Now, out of our two champions, we'll have to determine who is the grand champion. The shortboard champion will determine her longboard combined score. This is her grand champion score. The longboard champion will determine her shortboard combined score. This is her grand champion score. And the player with the highest grand champion score is crowned grand champion. So as we determined earlier, red, our shortboard champion, has a longboard score of 8.5, while blue, our longboard champion, has a shortboard score of 9.5. This will make blue our grand champion. And that means blue has won the game. In the case of a tie for Grand Champion, players will compare the single highest scored wave between the two of them. If there's still a tie, they'll compare the second highest scored wave. And if there's still a tie, they'll compare the third highest wave. If at that point you still have a tie, it's recommended that you find the nearest ocean and hold a real surfing contest to determine the winner of the game. And that's how you play Tabarua. There are also solo and advanced rules. I'll leave you to find the advanced rules on your own in the rulebook. However, I will be providing a solo campaign tutorial as well in the near future. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. You can find me on Twitter, at Board Offline. And until next time, if you're bored online, board offline.